Akhnishna. The Noman people have been living among their land for many years when they heard a great flapping and rustling in the heavens. Within moments, the air was filled with huge man-sized birds falling from the sky by the hundreds. Startled, the Noman tried to run away, but everywhere they went, the huge birds were falling from the sky and lying exhausted upon the rock, grass, shrub, boulder, tree, lake, stream bed. They were everywhere. Feeling invaded, the Noman ran to their houses and watched the birds. Though they had legs, they were not walking, and though they had arms, they were not rising, and though they had beaks, they were not eating. Instead, they lay upon the ground much as they had landed. They looked emancipated and tired. The Noman asked themselves, what should they do? Should they kill them now, as it would be most easy, or should they help them and risk these aliens among their land? And through the night, they argued. Life and death called back and forth among their halls. Yet in the morning, they had decided that as the Mutyagar had tried to drive them away, to not share their land and ultimately fail, they, the Noman, would try to avoid these bird people and risk their land. Stepping out that morning, they offered all sorts of their food to the birds, but though hungry, the birds turned their beaks up at most of it and grew weaker still. The Noman then set across their land collecting every berry, nut, fruit, tuber, and flower. However, they missed one flower which blossomed and bloomed brighter and brighter each day. Waiting to be plucked like all the others, but it went unnoticed because it bloomed within a great, unimpenetrable brush. Ultimately, it turned sour and fallow and foul and is now a deadly poison to bird and gnomon alike. As the gnomon discovered and collected all this food, they were discovering foods they had not known of before, and in celebration for this great discovery, decided to hold a feast every year upon this day. There was enough food that the birds liked some of it and ate enough to begin regaining their strength. Day by day, this ritual continued, and the birds' strength grew as each day passed. Some birds were too weak, however, and expired despite the gnomon's best efforts. These birds were then taken and buried at a site now called Gitvadian Hirot. It is now a place of worship for the bird gods Vityan and Kaat, and a place of thanks for the great discovery and great feast. One day, the bird people began to rise to their feet and walk around, and soon all were standing, cawing and walking. A thunderous flapping arose as the bird people began to take flight and soon were flying and circling through the air. Suddenly, when two of the birds copulated in midair, a single lightning blow came down and struck one bowman named Ornon, who for a short while fell down asleep. Her friends took her to be dead and began mourning her passing. But after a while, she awoke, saying she had had a wonderful dream. She had been talking to the great sea, and he had forgiven them for leaving and not wanting to come back. He had also said that he would take them back in death if their bodies were burned and dropped into the Twin River to grow and live again. That was the first dream of a nomad. Soon more lightning bolts shot down and more people fell, unconscious. Some people welcomed the bolts, but most others tried, tried to run. However, so great was the bird's joy at their new life that they were copulating in great numbers. And so many lightning bolts rained down that all the gnomen, once again, were shocked to sleep and all dreamed the dream of returning. In this dream, they returned to the sea and met all the spirits who had remained in the sea plant and who still swayed this way and that. They explained that they needed the spirits to replace them after they died. They explained how wonderful the new world was, and they explained that in death they too would return to the sea. At first, scared, the spirits showed little interest, so that the gnomon convinced a lobster crawling along the bottom near the sea plant roots 
to cut off one and set it adrift towards the shore. With time, those spirits in the drifting sea plant washed ashore and were born into the land. That is how the lobster became a sacred creature, fearful of being cut off and washed up among an unknown shore. The spirits agreed to rise with fog and blow ashore to impregnate the males, to grow within the females, and so the gnomon assured themselves of their future beyond their death. 